the administration of uh, university and college, law enforcement administration, and mental health organizations, are all of them united in criminally insane activity. My name is James McRollin Crary. I'm 61 years old and I'm deaf. I live in Tacoma. The only charge I have ever been advised of was that I was a jealous boyfriend. That's the only charge that was ever broadcast that I was advised of. It came down through the decibels of a criminally insane bull worker named Penis Gabriel. He was facilitated as an alien, unprovoked hate criminal by Clint Eastwood, Jay Inslee, Bill Gates, and a number of malicious and poisonous decoits like Shifty of UW Dialectical. And it is to be assumed that the Green Party, because they're run by Black Panthers, giggle at the sight of a white being tortured. The person responsible was Yoko Ono and her son, Sean Lennon. I was never allowed to confront my accuser, and I was never advised of the charges, but they've actually allowed to get around the idea that I was to blame for the what they claim was the murder of John Lennon. I stand solidly opposed to anybody who says that John Lennon did not fake that incident. I have all the evidence to show they pulled an imperial Houdini so that they could pull this off. I'm not really in need of any kind of rational defense. I am, of course, in need of defense from the criminally insane, but there's a difference between the two things. There was a script. As advocates for the writers of the script and the executioners and torturers of the script, people like Ringo Starr have been allowed to subject me to serial mutilation and poison crime as part of the generational genocide warrant and that included the granny side of the pepper virus COVID-19. Where's the justice in that? Well, we know that Yoko Ono's environment allows her to connect and talk with Oliver Stone and Vladimir Putin. So we know who her allies in this mischief are. We know that we can't afford to confront it because it's too big of a problem. We need detectives to arraign the perpetrators and to investigate such things like what happened with monkeypox and where did it come from. There's no reason not to be suspicious that the people who wrote the script were behind that, but they rallied the victims. The victims in Seattle, always brilliant, stood by and called getting monkeypox going part of Operation Building Momentum. It's absolutely impossible to comprehend. They murdered a girl over a penny, over a penny. Rather than investigate, rather than put a stop to these things, they called it building momentum. So they're going to get Licky Chop's money for spreading monkeypox now. Isn't that brilliant? They're absolutely brilliant people in Seattle. You can't get more brilliant than Seattle. There was a script. Every single detail, because it was Hollywood, came down to the blurb of Reagan's attorneys who had me in D.C. the day he claims he was shot. There's no such thing as objective reality, only what the jury believes and what their supporters would rather believe. So, we live in a society where the involuntary is considered rather. They talked openly of nearly killing me, forcing me to swallow, but the decision to swallow as a child was my decision so they didn't really poison me i poisoned myself even though they nearly killed me and wrote about it openly because hollywood was involved in this cynical bizarre ransom crime that the licky chops and the naacp think is really really patriotic to take an innocent person hostage man are operating from a script. It means that the stolen cars in which I was kidnapped were probably not really stolen cars. They were on loan to a Hollywood syndicate. 
but because I believed they were stolen cars, Clint Eastwood scratches his chin and says, "Mm mm-hmm. See, we should hold him through the state licensing board. Licensing board is guilty of not reporting a stolen car when he was held hostage because people were threatening to kill him. I would hide in my towel closet and insist my mother move away from that neighborhood because I couldn't get help. I went to the police repeatedly. I went to the principal repeatedly. I told them I was going to be killed and then disappeared for months. Clint Eastwood is a cold-blooded liar. He's a cowardly. He, you know, he picks on an innocent cow. You know, he's cowardly. He picks on innocent people who can't defend themselves because he can prop himself that way, you know, puff himself up that way. I mean, you're always hit from behind by an armed, full-grown man as a 98-pound child, like being shot. Oh, they called it a duel. Okay, so it's a script. They weren't really stolen cars, but I was led to believe they were stolen cars, so I got the hell out of them. I was scared to death. I was being kidnapped by adult murderers in what I believed to be stolen cars, right? And it all turned out to be Hollywood script. All of those cars were on loan. And they say, well, we're going to get the county detectives and the state licensing board to accuse him as if this is reality, as if it was reality. And they're allowed to do this to a child. They're allowed to do this. They had a man from the CIA following me to Allentown on my birthday. He crashed Wall Street the night before for fun and games. Well, Penis Gabriel was inundating me with, don't worry, I got your back. Putin's on the phone here. Jimmy, what gives? Is there a law? Is there, or is there any sane individual anywhere in the United States of America? Anywhere. Is there any single one of you a sane human being? Any one of you? I don't need a defense from anything rational. I certainly need a defense from the crowd cap, produced the Corona again, that decoy shifty. They're poisoning people. They murdered Cersei Kennedy and two more. And the gee, you know, the giggle, giggle, jibber, jibber, jibber. That's my sophistry, man. Get off my sophistry. Get off my microphone. This is UW Dialectical Call and Collect. 